Hi, I'm DJ Ware. On this episode of the Cyber Gizmo, we're going to be taking a look at installation of uh, Fedora 31, the workstation version, right after this. So one of the um, uh, one of the things we'll be using today is boxes, uh, the GNOME boxes for this, and I already have a number of stuff uh, of uh, systems installed here. But I'm going to go ahead and install uh, Fedora, and I have uh, a uh, ISO file that I've downloaded. It's about 1.9 gig or so in size for the workstation live CD, and we'll customize it. I could leave it at two gig; it's probably enough. But I think what I want to do is go ahead and give it about four. We'll use their what their suggested uh, settings are. I'm gonna give us a, just a little bit more disk because I wanna I wanna play around with Docker a little bit uh, during after we've installed this, and so we'll try that out. Give that a little spin. Oops, wanted it great. And there we go. And we'll go ahead and go into the live CD. And I will turn off this warning message here. And we don't need to do that check. <clears throat> I've already done that check. I usually do that once, and after I've done the, if you download something off the internet, you should always check the, uh, you should always check the signatures, the GPG uh, uh, signatures, and also do a validation on the file, make sure that it's all right. So, okay, so we've got this. I just want to make sure I'm not covering too much up with my, uh, my video. So, first thing is what language? English, you know, US. It picked up my time and date correctly. That's close enough. Now, normally I would, I would if I was installing this on hardware, I would, I would set up a number of uh, mount points. One particular would be for home. I would also put one for temp. And I'm, I probably would put VAR in one as well um, for security reasons. And, um, and that's probably the ones I would create in addition, of course, to the root data partition. But I, today we'll just let this go automatically. Since I don't plan on keeping this around, I'll probably will update my existing Fedora 30 uh, installation. I am running GNOME today um, because I want to clean out all of the extra packages I have on GNOME 30. So I've been kind of cleaning stuff out and making, getting ready to install 31. I, I, I either will do that or I will do a nuke and pave. I haven't decided yet which way I'm going to go. I'm in no hurry. Um, but let's go ahead and get the installation started. And I'll be back as soon as this gets to a point where uh, it's almost done. But it'll take a little bit. Okay, so we have finished. So we'll go ahead and finish the installation. And then we'll boot into our freshly installed Fedora 31. Let it continue its progress down and come, it's coming back up now. And this time it looks like it's coming up off of the, uh, the virtual drive. Welcome screen. I'm going to go ahead and turn these off. Skip that. <clears throat> I'm going to look at the. Uh, ah, this is an AD server. Active Directory. <clears throat> I, I, I'll have to look at that a little bit further, but. Uh, and see if uh, I can get this tied into an LDAP that way, but not today. We won't need to do that today, not for this. Okay. There's our getting started screen. And I'll be using the terminal in the terminal for a little bit, so I'm going to go ahead and add that to favorites. <clears throat> 
Hopefully that's, yeah, let's go up maybe one more. Hopefully that's large enough for you to see. Uh, the first thing I always do is do a, a DNF update. And I'll, and I'll be, well, we'll wait, but there's probably going to be quite a few. This is a few days after the release, and I'm sure there's lots of patches. Okay, yeah, it's about 119. So, yeah, we'll be back. I'm sure with the dependencies, we'll probably be about double that number. <laughs> we'll be back. Okay, so we installed all the updates, but I need a few more things. I'm gonna uh, go ahead and install Toolbox. Uh, I wanna play around with that a little bit. When I was initially testing, I thought for a little while I had a bug, and it turned out it was just a user error. But uh, as always, right? <laughs> I didn't report it, I just checked into the logs and followed and traced it down. Uh, so I have that installed. Let's see if Podman is out here. Yes. Let's see what version it is. Of course, I haven't rebooted yet, so 162. Okay, good. All right, so uh, I think I'm ready to re go ahead and reboot. Oh, one other thing. Um, before I do that... And doesn't appear to be enabled. Okay, so we'll go ahead and do that. And now we'll reboot. <clears throat> Pick up the new kernel. Okay, so I think the, uh, a couple of things that I want to do first is let's see what happens with Toolbox. So if you saw my video on Silverblue, I went through a number of things with Toolbox. The first time you create this, you don't have to give it a name, and you don't have to give it a name when you enter the Toolbox either. This does use Podman, and it creates a uh, a container that's based in your home directory. But it is still using, of course, the operating system underneath of it for all of its things. This is the, uh, so let's see if I run into my air again or whether it lets me in. If I get a purple dot, yes. If I get a purple dot next to my shell prompt, then all is good. I'm actually inside. This is the preferred method for testing out new applications, or if you just want to play around with something before you you actually install it. And so you then this way you can, if something goes wrong and and you don't like it, you can just destroy the uh, toolbox, and then uh, and then or or you can go ahead and install it in your main your main thing. So <clears throat> so uh, let's do a search. I don't have the repositories, the uh, the RPM Fusion uh, repositories enabled, so I'm expecting this to fail. With a, didn't find it, unless by some miracle they do that already. I don't. I doubt it. <laughs> I doubt they would do anything like that. <clears throat> Must be a lot of people updating today. The uh, repos look a little slow. Oh, it is there. Okay. Oh, you know what? Um, before I do this, let's let's see how much memory it's consuming. One one point zero six gig. 
Um, not too bad. Now, I, one thing I was going to tell you, a lot of people will go into the, like find it, the system monitor and they'll look at the amount of memory that is consumed here. Uh, this is going to be higher because it always includes the buffers. So, and that's really not accurate. So I always use Freemem and Freemem will tell you, this is the actual used. And then these are the, the buffer, the additional buffer cache that's reserved. Buffer cache, it will borrow the memory back if it needs it until there's none left and then it will start swapping. Um, but yeah, I, this is not, this gives you an overall view of the system, but it's not an accurate depiction of how much memory the, the, uh, the release is actually taking. So just be aware of that. Now, if I installed, if I installed a container, <laughs> it's going gonna, it's gonna to shoot up because the container is going to take some memory too. But uh, let's see how much memory the actual install is taking. 6.6, .6, how much disk the, the actual install is taking. 6.6 .6 gig in total. Eh, not bad. Well, let's go back into Toolbox Enter. And one thing about this is, I, I said this before in Silver Blue, when you do an LS, it's showing your home directory. So this is mutable. I can make changes to files here. I mean, I could create a file called test file. I'll just go back over this again. And then if I exit the, uh, if I exit the, the uh, toolbox, you see the file is there. I can edit it out here. And then if I go back in, you will notice that the file has changed. So uh, this is a nice way if you're doing coding work or, or you're doing some scripting that if you want to play around inside the toolbox, your changes are saved in your home directory. So yeah, that makes it kind of nice. You don't have to copy stuff in and out. But uh, all right, so let's uh, go ahead and install HTOP inside of here. <clears throat> This our HTOP, however, will not be in the base OS. <laughs> I can go back out and try to run HTOP, and it won't be there. But uh, at least it shouldn't be. If it is, then we got a problem. Because that kind of defeats the purpose of the toolbox. So, yeah, one of the things I, I like to use this for, if there's a new compiler that comes out, uh, a new C compiler or a new libc, uh, I'll go play with it inside of, of uh, this is on silver blue. I'll go and I'll go install it inside of the toolbox. Uh, try out my app, see if it breaks any of the other stuff that I have. And then if it does, if it doesn't, then I'll install it in the base. But uh, yeah, that's, that's what I'll do. So HTOP is working just fine inside the toolbox. And it should not be here. And it's not, oops, gotta type it. Uh, yeah, it's, it's not there. Let's tell them, try to use the top instead. So uh, then the other thing I could do uh, is see how close the command sets actually are. It used to be on the, some of the older versions of Podman, you would have to say Podman, Pod, then create. But it looks like they've aligned this more strictly with Docker. The other thing is that, let me do a where, which you run, and which run C. Docker uses run C, and run C is uh, C groups version one compatible, whereas C run is for C groups version two. So anything that I, sh anything that I run should be running C run and not run C. Just, so if you're if you're used to Docker and you're used to seeing Run C, don't get alarmed. It's called C Run under Fedora with Pod with Podman. So let's do a run. I'm just gonna do Alpine, and then we'll do a bin shell. And so what we should happen here is it should pull it. It did, and then it should put me inside of it, which it did not do probably because 
it just ran the shell and stopped. Yeah, that's exactly what it did. So let me do this. We'll do it interactively. There we go. <laughs> now we're inside. So, um, yeah. So now I'm running Alpine. Yep, Alpine 3.1. So, uh, okay, bad. Let's go see, uh, let's go look at a couple other things. Uh, let's go look at uh, Firefox. <clears throat> I think this is version 70. I saw it go by when it was installing. Yeah, version 70. So uh, one of the things that's kind of cool, uh, if, you're, if, you're, if you have set up um, DNS over HTTPS, if you go into your preferences and under general, just scroll down to the bottom, and you will find network settings. Just click on that. And you'll notice here that there is now an enabled DNS over HTTPS. You'll notice that, the, that it's gonna use provider Cloudflare. Now don't get alarmed, uh, that is not the actual <laughs> Cloudflare, it's not the 1.1.1.1 uh, uh, DNS server that's replying to this request. Mozilla has actually set up their own Cloudflare virtual machine. And that is what that is referencing. And I'll, I can, you can look at the about config if you want, and you can actually see that. Uh, I, I, we can bring it up. It's in the net TRR um, configuration. So, uh, they, and you go out to Mozilla, you can look at the privacy policy uh, for DNS over HTTPS. It's much more strict with the Mozilla version than it is with the Cloudflare. But if that bothers you, you can set up your own. There's, a, uh, you can set up a custom one. So if you want to route to some of the others that are out on the internet, you can do that. So uh, the choice is yours. But let's just see if this works. I need to. I haven't been up on anything yet. So let's go to. No, I'm not going to Facebook. Uh, yeah, seems to work. Um, I would have to go and, and actually verify this with Wireshark or maybe uh, playing around with the firewall to prevent access, but just to see if it was actually using port 53 or not. But uh, yeah, seems to work just fine. Now, of course, this is only going to do DNS queries over HTTPS for this particular browser session. If you want to have it enabled for every DNS request, then of course you would have to set that up in your either in your uh, firewall or you would have to set up something uh, something else to be able to do that. So anyway, just to let you know that that's available. It's kind of cool, I think. Um, see what else we have. Nautilus looks the same. This is uh, one thing I didn't do, I should do. Let's go into settings. Gnome is 3.34.1. 3, 3 I, I did notice that even though this is running under a virtual machine, it's not bad. I mean, it's really not bad at all. Um, Be interested to see how well this runs under KDE. Now this is using now GNOME does use Waylon, uh, and there isn't I don't believe an option for I, I could go back out and look, but I don't think there's an option for running it under. We'll find out. There's an option to run it under uh, X or not X11 or not. Let's let's see. Oh yeah, you can. Okay. There's also the GNOME Classic if you prefer that look. And of course, you can always install what other desktop environment you prefer. They, there's a number of them, so that's good. So I can still run it under X11 if I have applications that uh, are known to break under Wayland. And let's go in here. I haven't set this up yet. And of course, if you want the third-party repositories, you can enable those or not.
Let's go ahead and install GIMP. The last time I did this, it took a while. So I'm going to pause this while it goes, and so you're not watching paint dry with me. I'll be right back. Is validating that we're, we're recording again. Uh, okay, so that's done. And one thing I, I did not mention when I was talking about Podman is that uh, Podman, like Docker, runs as root. So there, if you're wanting to run Podman rootless, there are, there's a very good bro, uh, blog article by uh, Tom Sweeney out on podman.io. And he goes through the steps of setting up Podman so that it's rootless. And so you, if you're interested in running that, uh, you might want to take a look at that. I'll put a link to that in the description like I always do so that if you want to go out and look at that article yourself. It also goes through a number of the changes for C Groups version 2. It's a very good article. He, he did a really good job on it and um, uh, talks about how to set it up so that you can, you can have multiple users using Podman so that they, you know, they don't collide with one another. Uh, and see each other's, more importantly, see each other's Docker container, or excuse me, Podman containers. Uh, so anyway, it's hard to say, it's hard to go back and say, you know, Podman after you've used Docker for so many years. Uh, what else did we miss? Probably just the usual boxes. You, you've seen that before, if you've seen any of the stuff that I'm doing. That all looks the same. Let's go look and see what version that we're running here. And then I'll go check and see what the latest version is at this moment on LibreOffice. 6322. So let's go, let me go over here to a browser. Should have done this ahead of time. I didn't. Six three three. Yep. It's it's one. <laughs> one point release behind, but yeah, it's close. Um, pretty close. Close enough, maybe. <clears throat> and utilities, anything new? Oh yeah, problem report. So uh, if you if your system does record a problem, it should appear here. And then you have some options of what to do with it. Uh, you, you can set your preferences to report it to Fedora, process the problem using the infrastructure. Why are all these? This, oh, kernel crash, kernel loops. So depending upon what the problem is, you can get it to the right group. I assume that's the reason why they do this here. Uh, and then here's your choice of events. So unlike Clear Linux, which automatically does that, you do that. <laughs> after a problem has, has occurred, but it will set up the information for you, I believe. Um, don't know what else. That's all nice new uh, looks here. I guess we can look at some of the background windows. Yeah, yeah. And see what, uh, oops, didn't want that one. Want that one. Flipped. Slipped of the finger. So like you have one with a clock in the center. And kind of a, is that a grayed out pattern? Hmm. Oh, that's the, okay, so never mind. Yeah, I get it. That's the uh, home screen. I, I kind of like the darker look. Um, I don't know, it, it, the, all these monitors, the, the, uh, the amount of lumens that they produce are a little brighter than I would prefer to stay around too, for too much long, uh, for very long of a time. So I think I want, I know what I want to work on next, but uh, uh, if there's something in Fedora 31 workstation you'd like to see, leave a comment down below uh, and uh, let me know if there's something specific that you would, you know, that you'd like me to cover and take a look at. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video today. If you did, please like and subscribe and hope to see you again real soon. And uh, um, bye for now.